Hi there. Join me on a wild camp back in time. We're going back to the 1970s, nearly 50 years ago. Follow me. Luckily, in the early 1970s, we got a colour television. So, I think we can return to colour now. That's better. Now, as you can see, I am getting on a bit. In my 60s now, but I still love going out wild camping in the Peak District, an area that I've lived near all my life. I first started wild camping in the, the 1970s. Previous to that, I'd been in the Scouts for five years, so that gave me a good introduction to camping. We had some great times and visited some great places. So it was time to venture out on my own. So in the early 1970s, that's the time when I bought my first uh, camping kit. And I've kept a lot of it. You don't throw valuable stuff like that away. So the other day, I was sorting through my camping gear and I came across my old tent and various other bits. And I thought, wouldn't it be a great idea to do a wild camp <coughs> using my original camping gear? It will also prove that if you buy quality kit, it will last you a lifetime. All my early camping gear is still in good nick. The only reason I don't use it is the weight. We look at this rucksack here. That weighs probably, I think it's about 35 pound. And this is only an autumn camp. If I came out with my modern gear, I'd probably be around the 15 to 18 pound mark, half the weight of that. So it will be a good comparison. And not only that, there are also a lot of old photographs we're going to look at of me, various tents that I have owned and various campsites or styles of camping I have done over the last 40 years. They will be very entertaining and should provide you all with a lot of fun. Now if we look at some of the clothing I've got on Quite a bit of this is from the, the 1970s. This is a, uh, it's a Rowan jacket. If you think in the 1970s, we didn't have the internet and with all that side of it, you could only get your information from, from books, probably the odd magazine, and I joined the Backpackers Club. And they had a mag monthly magazine, uh, a quarterly magazine and you could glean quite a bit of information from that. So I think I spotted this Rowan jacket. A lot of people seem to be wearing them, so I thought I'll get one of them. And it's been great. It's made of poly cotton, shower proof. Uh, it's got four big pockets. I still use it a lot today. You might have seen it on some of my, my other videos. It only weighs a pound in weight and it packs down very small. Great for backpacking. I'll just shed this because I'm getting a bit warm as well. So, other kit I've got on. Well, this jacket here is even older. This is a Heli Hansen fiber pile jacket. Now, I know everybody wears fleece jackets today. 
this is the forerunner it was made of fiber pile which is very warm and good wicking properties but when i got this it was probably the very early 70s fleece hadn't even been invented i don't think uh, so i thought this it was great i think it was to replace an old cardigan or something like that but it came became part of my camping kit and it is so warm so yeah this is this is really old one of the oldest bits of kit i've got the trousers are crag hoppers they're a bit newer they're, they're probably literally new they're probably only 20 years old but they they were styled on the 1970s trousers the boots i've got on these were my scarper mantas my first proper leather walking boots uh, they have seen better days they're all right for the summer but they do leak a bit um, i've used them for tree climbing and even gardening there so they're still going even though they're 40 years old some of the other gear that we would have worn in those days was basically made of wool we had wool hats on wool gloves wool socks i'm sure there were some sort of wool wool jumpers to keep you warm um, so it was all warm clothing but it did itch a lot but that was wool for you but wool kept you warm even when it was wet so that that's a quick look at some of the gear that uh, i would have worn in the 70s and i still have on today so what we'll do now we'll look to get in the the tent up and I'll, I'll go through some of the uh, the gear that I'm using. So, gonna make a start at getting my tent up. My first tent, proper backpacking tent, was a Field and Trek Trailmaster. Now you've probably heard of Field and Trek. In the early 70s it was a new company and i got most of my gear from it it was one of the best um walking gear like camping gear companies you could have and they also had a great big catalog i spent hours looking through it you could compare all your sleeping bags your tents it had got everything in obviously no internet so that so this to me this field and trek catalog was like a bible because you could get anything you wanted out of there. I know the company's been taken over and not the same now, but in the 70s as a new company, it was fantastic. And they did have, as well as all the brands, they had their own stuff, so that was a bit cheaper. And that is why I bought this uh, Field and Trek, um, oh, I forgot what it is, Trailmaker, Trailmaker tent. So, We'll make a start at getting that up. Now in those days, they hadn't invented, I don't think, curved poles, or you didn't have them with tents. So they were good, solid aluminium poles. And I can tell you, th this tent was classed as four season, and you can see why. With uh, these, it's like with your eight poles like that, these could take some right loading. Anyway, I'll get it set up and then uh, I'll show you, show you around it a bit more. I might add, I haven't used this tent. I don't think I've personally used it since probably 2000. I think the kids used it once when we were all camping together. I haven't even checked it. It was so neatly packed up, I couldn't be bothered to unravel it. So it might just fall apart. But hopefully, and I'm, uh, I'm sure it will be, it's in good condition. Like a lot of tents of that uh, era, you had an outer and an inner, separate.
hopefully I can still remember how to pitch it. It's all coming back, it's all coming back. So you can see that is the, the shape of the tent. Got eight poles, a sloping ridge and guide all the way round and all the way round the bottom as well. I nearly didn't see them. I thought, what's these spare pegs? And then I remember we've got guys on the outer all the way round. And you can see the shape. That's why it's four season. It would shed snow easily. If you put the tail into the wind, it was a, a streamlined. So what a fantastic design. So what we've got to do now is get the inner in. So we've got the outer up. We've got a separate inner here. Probably haven't been out the bag 15, 20 years. Might have been made of cotton even. No, it's poly cotton. So I'll get this inner in, and then we'll look at some of the gear. So that's the inner in, and that's it completed now. Now one thing, I was just emptying my rucksack, and I forgot to tell you about this. So this. Another bit of old kit. First rucksack. It's a Carrymore Jaguar S65. Indestructible. That has been everywhere. Various camps, tree camping, just left in the undergrowth, picked up another day. It's as tough as anything. It ain't got a mark on it. Uh, sorry, a, a hole or anything in it. I've got my new, I think it's a lightweight 70 litre. I've only had it about five years and that has started to get a few holes in it and it will leak. This is as tough as old boots, this. So that was, yeah, rucksack, 1970s era, still going strong. You probably pick one up on eBay for about a tenner, worth its weight in gold. So, last couple of bits of the gear. Early mattress, firmer rest. They were the best you could get. They were a big advance, advancement from your, your air bed. So this was, it was actually invented, developed by two Boeing engineers who were avid backpackers. And they uh, developed the um, Thermarest in, I think it was 1971. So I've got that to blow up, but that will go in the tent there. Still got my sleeping bag. First one of that era. I got this out. It basically filled the rucksack. Weighs five and a half pound. And I had to fashion these two straps up to compress it enough to get it into my rucksack. It would have had a, a compression sack on it, but that's long gone. Oof. So that's mounting, e mounting equipment. They made some good gear. It's not down, it's hollow fill, but it were like three season rated, so it, it's it's what I might use in winter with a lot of clothing on then. Um, it was warm enough, but it was so heavy and so bulky. You put that in your rucksack and it literally filled it. So, 
usage, I still use it, it gets taken on fishing trips and sleeping out in odd places, so it still gets some use. So that's basically the camp set up. So I'm just going to finish things off and I'll, I'll talk to you in a little bit. As for food in the 1970s, when I first started out, I was definitely not that adventurous. The easy way, which is still popular now, is to use what was dehydrated food. I don't tend to use it so much now, but occasionally. The food of the era, I couldn't get hold of. I have two dehydrated meals here that would be very similar to the 1970s. There are expedition foods. That's chicken tikka with rice. Used by day, April 18. I'm sure I'll be all right. And that's uh, custard with apple, and that, that's got a better date, that. But uh, it uses them up as well as anything else. So, the, the stoves, of, stoves of the era, where you had the old-fashioned paraffin, gas were in, of course, um, and petrol stoves. Probably one of the most popular was the Trangia um, meth stove. So, this is my old Trangia well looked after, all cleaned up. So I'm gonna get this going, get some water boiled, and then we'll, we'll try chicken tikka with rice. I pour a little bit of water in with the meths. It's supposed to stop your pots from getting black. And I also tried some new bio something and it turned my pots as black as anything. I understood it didn't, but my pots were black as anything. So I'm sticking with meths. I got it from a decorator's shop. I'm assuming you can, you can still buy it all over. Or is that the... EU saying it's not safe for us to have meths now. Better put some water in first. So we'll get this uh, water boiling and try the chicken tikka. As you can see, I have uh, surprisingly a lot of room in here. I've got used to camping in Misulu and the cooking is okay in the porch but it is a bit cramped. And when I look at all the room I've got here, I think the Sulu is four pound in weight this is six pound in weight not a not a major difference and this porch is massive and it's great for for cooking in if it's raining there is definitely more room in here than the sulu and it's four season might be coming out again this temp Kettle's boiling, time to try this. So I've got to put in here four Ugh. oxygen, oxygen thing out and four 40 mils of water. Trying your kettle, I think he's 600, so quite a lot of this to go in.
give it a good mix. It smells of <coughs> it smells of curry. So we're gonna leave that five or eight minutes to rehydrate. Easy, easy, isn't it? So we'll put the damper on that. And wait for my tea. So this should be about ready now. Chicken ticker. Very hot temperature wise. So it will warm me up. And it's very tasty as well. As you can see, the light's suddenly gone. So I've had to mount a headlamp on the tripod just to illuminate everything. So I'll finish my curry. <coughs> Apple and custard, cup of coffee. And then, we're only halfway through. There is a full night of entertainment. By the use of photographs from the 70s, 80s, 90s and later I'm going to take you through my last 40 to 50 years of I'll say camping because it's not just wild camping it'll cover every tent I've basically owned over the last uh, 50 years there is a lot of photographs quite a few of me and if anything Apart from finding it entertaining, you will have a big laugh. So, I will see you when I've got this lot sorted and you're in for a treat. I'll talk to you in a little bit. As it's the uh, 1970s, you can see we've got the traditional tent lighting, a candle. A lot of people used them, gave enough light to read a book, also gave out a little bit of heat to raise the temperature inside the tent. You've got to think LEDs, we hadn't even dreamt of them, never mind anything else. If you had a torch, you needed batteries, they were heavy, you needed spare batteries. So a candle, it was perfect really. Right, we're ready to start tonight's entertainment. I'm going to take you on a journey from the 1970s to present day on the tents I've owned, a lot of the sites where I've camped and the style of camping I've done. But obviously it's, it's the 1970s and you really need to know what I look like then. So, like I say, it'll be a series of photographs. So this first photograph, that is me, 1971. I was 16, I was just about to start work. So, if you were thinking those days, the boys their hair was longer than the girls and everybody well most of my friends had long hair so we all grew our hair a few years later i bought my first proper backpacking tent it was from a, the newly formed field and trek company in those days i think i mentioned Poles were straight. I don't think they developed curved poles. So they tended to form like a, an A pole with a sloping ridge. And that was their sort of universal shape in the early 70s. At seven pound in weight, it was classed as a lightweight tent and was suitable for four season use. I used it in winter. 
and I was very pleased with it. It felt very strong, I felt secure, and it easily shed any snow. I even managed to get a double air bed in and took my girlfriend camping. She's now my wife and she she doesn't come camping with me any longer. Now in the 1970s and 80s we did a different style of camping. It was uh, our summer holidays and we basically, well, the term we used was roughing it. We had a camp bed and a sleeping bag and say three of us in one car and we drove all over Europe, sleeping in various car parks, laybys, anywhere where we could sleep for free. And we had a fantastic time. We did it for about 10 years. We went as far as Athens and as far down to Gibraltar and we must have slept in nearly every lay-by there was. Our favourite place was the south of France and we had uh, many car parks that we went by year after year. It was warm, there was no dew, we never got wet. We got bitten to death by mosquitoes but we had a fantastic time. I carried on uh, camping with my trail maker and my first son who was four well I thought it was time to introduce him to camping so I took him to Field Head campsite at Edale it became a, a favourite campsite we could get out in 20 minutes on the train and we had uh, quite a few good camps together. Then uh, number two son arrived and I convinced my wife I needed a bigger tent if I was to take them both camping. So I treated myself to a, a Hilleberg Nalo 3GT if I can remember it right and that would sleep all three of us. Mind you, they were growing up a bit and while camping could not compete against the Xbox and the Game Boy and all those things. So that tent got sold and I just needed a tent for myself. So I bought myself a Saunders Jetpacker then. Only three pound in weight, basically like this tent but smaller. It was small, it was cramped, but it only weighed three pound. So it was, it was fantastic. Uh, I had quite a few camps in it. I never got a photograph of that one. Um, just one of those things, uh, just didn't get a photograph. Time moved on, children were growing up and it was time to purchase the largest tent I have ever owned a Conway trailer tent at six meters by four meters it was massive it took hours to set up but we got everything in it from a fridge to patio tables and chairs everything went with us and we, we had some great family camps we took it to to France um, very tiring with a, having to set it up and two young children, but we had some great, great camps. Venturing out more in winter, I decided I needed a proper mountain tent. So I looked round to see what there was and I decided Terra Nova Quasar. I'd read quite a bit about it and I thought, yep, yeah, that's a tent for me, as strong as anything. So I purchased my Terra Nova Quasar, used it quite a few winter camps, but the one thing against it was the weight. I had the, call it the original Quasar, and it weighed nine pound, and I was using it on my own. So it was it were fantastic. I felt so safe and secure in it, but it was just too heavy. 
So I'm afraid the Terra Nova Quasar had to go. And then probably about five years ago, I invested in another Hilliberg, a Hilliberg Sulu, which I still use to a uh, present day. And that is the tent, I think, uh, which a lot of other wild campers use, if you look on YouTube. For one person, it seems to fill everything, really. It, uh, it's strong, it's quite roomy, it's lightweight, it's made of good materials. So, yeah, so I will be carrying on and using my Sulu for the future. Well, that brings me up to date with the tents I've owned and the style of camping I've done. I hope you don't mind me reminiscing, but it only seems like yesterday, laid on a camp bed somewhere in Europe, waking up in the morning, probably be a policeman kicking your camp bed, telling you to get up because they want to open it as a car park. We'd wake up and uh, think, where should we go today? Somebody say, I've got a load of Italian lira. I know, let's nip to Italy. We'll have a good drink in Italy. And off we'd go, heading over to Italy for a few beers. Another day. They were happy days. It, it does not seem like they were 40 years ago. No way, no way. But happy days. So, I hope you have enjoyed this little bit of reminiscing and uh, enjoyed the photographs, possibly had a, a laugh or two, no problem. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the morning. Night then. Don't know if you can hear that rain, but it is absolutely pouring it down. Been at it for about an hour woke me up. I look at the forecast, it, it, it has forecast heavy rain from about 2 to 8 in the morning. So it looks like we're going to get quite a bit. Should be a, a good test for this old tent. See how it, see how it goes on. Being, it's all dry up to now, no problems. It is made with, like I say, pretty heavy waterproof fabric, so... I could imagine it lasting well. I don't know what me Sulu would be like in 50 years time. Sometimes uh, I know it's like a high performance fabric but you know I feel thin. Yeah it's really coming down. Anyway see how we go. See you in the morning. Good morning, what a night, poured it down most of the night, the noise of that rain did keep me awake quite a bit. Looking out there the sun has just started coming out so in a bit I should be okay for packing up. So we're having a breakfast uh, that's been around for not since the 70s, probably for hundreds of years, porridge. Cheap, easy, and filling. Well, that looks nice. Very hot. Somewhere, I've got some uh, golden syrup. Goes lovely with the uh, porridge. Oh, good, it's not gone solid. It's not too cold. Yeah, that's nice. That'll fill me up. Well, the, the tent has performed fine. No leaks. I mean, it rained solidly for probably six hours. And... There's no water come through. I can see teeny bits on the outer fly sheet. The ventilation was great. Uh, better than Misulu, I would say. 
plenty of room so yeah very happy with it it might be coming out again I think So I'm going to get on, enjoy my breakfast, cup of coffee, and then it'll be that dreaded time to pack everything away. I think the tent is going to be wet, the outer is. Should be able to shake some of the rain off. So I'll see you in a little bit. How changeable the weather is. Bright sunshine now. Hopefully, it might dry out my tent a bit before I pack it away. I hope you've enjoyed my nostalgic look back over the, the last 50 years. It certainly brought back some memories for me. Some fantastic memories. I suppose it's also shown, well, first of all, how equipment has improved. It's basically got a lot more lightweight with modern materials. But the basic design we had in the 70s, it's still there. It's, it's still there. It's just been improved on and made lightweight. And also, if you're starting out camping, while camping, it shows you don't have to have the best equipment. A lot of this, people would probably want to get rid of it or they'll put it on eBay for about 10 or 20 quid so I reckon you could cheaply get yourself set up with some old gear and be out while camping you don't have to go for the expensive stuff I've proved it I've had a great night while camping with 40 50 year old gear so my next job is to get this lot packed up shouldn't take too long if uh, it stays dry, which I'm sure it will. So like I say, hope you found it uh, interesting and entertaining. Those photographs, they were a laugh. I hope I entertained you there. So if I could say thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one soon. Bye then.